This podcast is brought to you by the School of Advanced Study, University of London. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm conscious that uh, we're approaching close of day when um, consideration of human rights will, of course, have to give way to some extent to considerations of human refreshment. So I will not um, uh, detain you for very long. Ask to consider the new common law of the Commonwealth, I thought it might be of at least some profit and amusement to look at its application in a recent case, again, I think, disobeying one's um, instincts and referring to a case in which one was, uh, concerned, <coughs> one was concerned oneself, a recent case in the Privy Council. Um, the Privy Council, of course, is no longer to everyone's taste, but it remains a forum um, in which strands of the common law are unraveled, examined, hopefully woven together again in a satisfactory manner, and its influence stretches well beyond those countries which still make use of it as a second-tier court of appeal. But the example that I would refer to involves the human right to freedom of expression. It's a case from Mauritius and was decided as recently as April this year um, it's called Duarica, uh, um, for those um, who may be interested to look at it when it is finally reported. I think it's due to come into the official series of law reports quite soon. Um, it involved the editor of a newspaper, Sam de Plus, who um, reported um, the views of a prominent local lawyer, now disbarred, um, who expressed his opinion of the Chief Justice in trenchant and um, no doubt rather offensive terms, although um, most judges, I think, might well have thought that the best reaction would be shrug their shoulders and um, say, well, no one is going to take that very seriously. Indeed, that, at the end of the day, is rather what the Privy Council thought was the effect of what was said. However, what was involved was a species of contempt of court, known as scandalizing the court with its roots in the common law in the 18th century, and um, developed uh, over the years since then. Scandalizing the court, meaning um, scurrilous attacks on the court, often in the press, uh, likely to affect the administration of justice by lowering the judiciary in the eyes of the general public. Um, Sam de Plus was thought to have uh, fallen foul of the principle. Um, I was asked to become involved by the Commonwealth Lawyers Association because uh, once the case became known, it was realized that um, a very large number of other jurisdictions, apart from Mauritius, um, had experience of similar problems. And Colin Nichols, who I'm delighted to see here, and other members of the Commonwealth Lawyers Association thought it might be in their members' interests if the situation was clarified somewhat. And they also felt, and indeed the board said in due course, that they had something they could add to the debate. But the reason I mention it um, in the context of the new common law of the Commonwealth is because it seems to me to illustrate something rather positive in that there are contributions to be made simply from the fact that the Commonwealth is so widely spread throughout the Commonwealth and covers so many different sorts of uh, social structure, so many different um, cultural um, qualities that uh, we all can benefit mm -hmm. greatly from each other's experience. We go back to England where uh, I'm sure you will know statute has put an end to the common law offence. Uh, what happened um, was that um, a judge in Northern Ireland was so cross about something that the uh, politician Peter Hayne had said about him that he attempted to resurrect the offence and the Attorney General um, did indeed uh, contemplate bringing proceedings until wiser counsels prevailed. But that um, focused the mind of the legislators and uh, led by a charge um, with Lord Panic at the head, um, the, uh, 
Parliament uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, not in the United Kingdom, I'm so sorry, in England and Wales, has um, abolished the offence of scandalising the court. Uh, I'm careful to correct myself because it survives in Scotland, uh, where it is known rather oddly as murmuring judges. Um, now, uh, uh, fairly recently, it has been upheld in Scotland to the extent that it has been said that it is unlikely to um, contravene the freedom of expression provisions of the uh, Convention. And indeed, the Convention has upheld a number of situations where um, uh, extreme examples of scandalising the court have, uh, under whatever they're known as locally, um, uh, been uh, found to be to justify prosecution. But um, in the Privy Council case of Duarica, the judgment um, refers to authorities from no less than 16 different jurisdictions. Um, and I can mention one or two of the more colorful ones for our amusement in a moment. Um, it is, in fact, of course, um, an existing offense in more countries than that. The annex to the judgment uh, includes some 36 authorities in which 24 countries have found that scandalizing the court is still a viable um, uh, criminal offense. Um, and uh, these were gone through in some detail. Um, and I, I, I can explain in a moment what the result was. But uh, one began with England. Uh, the case of Gray in 1900 is usually cited as an example in which a journalist referred to Mr. Justice Darling mm -hmm. in, in less than um, uh, attractive language. He said he was an impudent little man in horse hair, uh, a microcosm of conceit and empty headedness. <laughs> now, I think Mr. Gray did avoid prison by making an abject apology. Uh, and um, Similar sort of language does crop up from time to time. Fairly recently, in the case of the Attorney General of Queensland against Colin Lovett QC, um, the silk in question was successfully prosecuted for calling the judge in his case a complete cretin. Um, but uh, no doubt some judges um, would have simply uh, regarded that as um, all part of a day's work. Um, in Canada, where the offence is now effectively um, obsolete, um, the uh, a defendant called Copite was prosecuted uh, and uh, successfully by a majority for referring to um, the <coughs> judge in a case in which he was involved as having perpetrated a mockery of justice which stinks to high hell. One can make light of these, but there are occasions where the courts have found that similar activity can indeed uh, affect the administration of justice adversely. Um, uh, Michael Thomas and I were speaking just now about a, a case from Hong Kong, Wong Yung Ng, where um, a campaign was mounted by the press against the local judiciary. Uh, and campaign is certainly not too strong a word. Not only were the uh, judges referred to as scumbag, pigs, and running dogs. Um, and Michael Thomas tells me that that is quite a polite translation of the original. Um, they were subjected to uh, following um, by uh, paparazzi, I suppose, would be the nearest equivalent, which caused um, one judge in particular to be followed for some three days by a gang of journalists on scooters. Now, uh, scandalizing in the court in, in circumstances like that might well be considered by most right-thinking people as something to be um, at least meriting um, a criminal sanction. Uh, another example from Hong Kong involved a registrar, repeatedly referred to, I understand, as a bitch. Um, now, she um, might have forgiven it once, I don't know. Some judges would, some judges would regard it as very serious, but that is the sort of situation that judges uh, may or may not require protection against, depending upon the circumstances. But it is of interest that um, in cases uh, throughout the Commonwealth, an exceptional class has been found 
where such prosecutions are, are justified. In India, it is found not against the Constitution. In Malaysia, in New Zealand, they have had particular problems and addressed a, a, a growth field in the internet and on Facebook where people have posted material um, which has been found to um, run a risk of causing injustice. In Singapore, there are controversial uh, examples of its use. It's been used in Fiji, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, South Africa, um, and as I say, um, all the cases are of interest in all the countries as revealing different circumstances um, <coughs> which uh, are likely to come before the court uh, and maybe have serious consequences. But the, uh, the need for a, a, a general approach is demonstrated by the case in question, the Sam de Plus case, because it turned on a number of uh, questions of very general um, and great importance relating to freedom of speech. The first is whether such an offence of scandalising the court <coughs> is in breach of constitutional guarantee of free speech. Is it? Um, the court, uh, the board, um, following most of the jurisdictions, um, found that the existence of the offence did not breach the constitutional guarantee of free speech, provided it was um, restricted or, or given a restricted interpretation. The second uh, uh, very important um, uh, consideration is what are the actual ingredients of the offence if it is to be a, a justifiable criminal offence? Uh, and it is here that the board demonstrated, I think, the great assistance that can be derived from the new common law of the Commonwealth, as a subject of this paper describes it. Um, Lord Clark, who gave the judgment, asked the rhetorical question, what are the ingredients of the offence? He then referred to um, uh, cases from Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, uh, Canada again, Hong Kong, um, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. Um, he uh, drew a number of principles from those cases and um, came to the conclusion that uh, it would be um, necessary to establish a high degree of mens rea and uh, the actual likelihood of uh, the administration of justice being affected. <coughs> I'm very much um, summarizing what he said due to questions of time and because I wouldn't, uh, in a few words, be able to do justice to his conclusion. But I think it is worth um, emphasizing that there is still scope for this sort of comparative analysis and a good deal of benefit um, can be derived by all of us if it is undertaken. Uh, and so I commend to all of us um, cross-fertilization between our jurisdictions mm. and uh, um, the greatest respect to the judges um, by reference to their different backgrounds, their different experiences, and the way in which they express themselves. There are judgments in the uh, South African case of Mama Bolo, um, which um, are quite um, startlingly clear um, and uh, as uh, uh, the spokesman for the occasion for the Commonwealth Lawyers Association, I found them a pleasure to read to the court, and I think the court found a great pleasure in listening to them. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very glad to have had the opportunity. Also very glad to have the opportunity to address you all, and I very much enjoyed my day, as I know we all have. Thank you.